Hi, everybody. I hope the previous episodes have piqued your interest and that you are motivated to learn more tricks for rendering a 3D scene in 2D shaders. As you may have noticed, so far we've been able to change the camera's position, but not the direction it's facing, meaning it was fixed straight ahead, which has been somewhat limiting. In this video, we'll solve this problem so that by the end, we'll be able to aim the camera anywhere or even set it up as an orbiting camera. So let's do it. Just like in the previous episode, I'd like to remind you that if you've just come across this video and haven't seen the previous parts, I highly recommend watching them first, especially if you are not very experienced in this topic. And for those who would like to get the source code that will be expanding, you can download it from my Patreon. You'll find all the links in the video description. So we have the scene in the state, uh, here it is. We have the scene in the state that we left it at the end of the third episode. I think it's time to change our shader's resolution from the temporary 600 by 400 to the standard full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. This will give us a slightly wider view, which will come in handy when we start capturing the scene from different positions and angles. So we need to make two changes. First, we'll set the new dimensions for the color act to which we applied our shader, this one. Let's do it in the inspector. So in layout, expanding, transform and changing the size to 1920 by 10. AD. Okay, this is the first part. And we also need to adjust the value of the resolution parameter to ensure the correct aspect ratio calculation. This could be done solely in the inspector, but I think it's safer to also update the default values in the shader code. So I'll do it here. It would be 1920 and 1080 okay save and here just reset to default values and we are ready let's get started first a bit of theory i found a great article on learnopengl.com that clearly explains the differences between various coordinate systems and transformations needed for working in 3d if you're interested in this topic, I highly recommend exploring the entire website. But for now, to keep things simple, we'll focus on just one thing, an image that nicely illustrates how a perspective camera works. And here it is. Our camera is here, and this is the near plane and far plane. We can simply say that the near plane represents the screen on, onto which we project our 3D scene. That is, well, what our 2D shader displays. It's not completely accurate definition since we are actually rendering onto a projection plane. But as I said, we can simplify it this way in this case. The far plane, on the other hand, is the maximum distance we can extend the ray before determining that it hasn't been any, it hasn't hit any object. Everything in between this part, known as the viewing frustum, will be rendered using our shader. So, as we know, in our code, we use ray origin, which is essentially the camera's position and ray direction whose X and Y components correspond to UV coordinates of the current pixel. Let's switch back to Godot and uh, no. scroll down. OK, and here it is. RO is camera and RD is currently just pointing forward just to the center of the screen. So if the camera, uh, if the camera is looking straight ahead, the basic definition is sufficient, but what if we tilt the camera? 
In that case, we need to compute the correct array direction by transforming from a word space to a view space, that is, from a screen perfectly aligned with the coordinate axis to a screen tilted in any arbitrary angle. In other words, we will need new values for the three vectors that define such a space, the forward vector, the right vector, and the up vector. We can illustrate this with this image. The x, y, and z axis in black represent a word space, while the blue, right, uh, up, and forward belong to the view space or what the camera sees and to which we want to adjust the ray direction for each point on the screen. So we'll start with the forward vector, which is supposed to point to the center of the screen. And it's simply the line connecting the camera to the point it's looking at, which we will call a look at vector. Since we want to be able to change this point as needed, we'll add it as a new uniform parameter. OK, so let's open the shader code and put it here. For example, after the camera, I will add uniform vec3 look at and the default value let's put to the origin so it would be just zero 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 vector okay and we can add the forward vector to the code we are only interested in the direction not the distance so we'll normalize that let's scroll down and here after the ro which is our camera let's do this Vector 3 forward is normalize, as I said, look at minus RO. OK, but how do we determine the right vector? Let's just bring up the image, what I'm talking about, this one. How do we determine it? We can use the fact that this vector is perpendicular to the plane defined by this y-axis and the forward vector, meaning it's perpendicular to both of these vectors. The direction of such a vector can be easily calculated using the cross product, which is an operation that multiplies two vectors and the result is another vector, like this. Vector 3 right is cross product of vector 3 and the y-axis is simply 0 1 0 and the forward vector okay and what about the direction of the upper vector this one uh, it will be straightforward because we know it must be per perpendicular to both forward and the right vectors. So it will be another cross product. Vector 3 up is cross product of forward and right. All right, great. We have all three axes of the tilted coordinate system. And now we'll convert the ray direction vector for each pixel on the screen into it. We'll start with center, which is the easiest, as it corresponds to the direction of the forward axis. OK, let's write the code. Vector 3, center, is simply ray origin plus forward. And for all other pixels, we'll define an offset from this center in the direction of the right and up axis to the right, which is x, and up, which is y. And we'll call this vector intersection. Vector 3, intersection, and it's the center vector, and now it's a little bit shifted uvx multiplied by the right vector and plus uvy multiplied by up vector 
all right and the desired ray direction will be the normalized vector connecting the intersection point and the camera so here we have normalized but instead of this we will put that intersection minus ray origin okay by the way it's important to normalize this vector using this normalized function meaning to convert it into a unit vector otherwise object close to the camera could be partially clipped so let's see how the scene changed i'll open it again and okay we can see only the white color because the camera is too close to the look at point i think we can set it for example to 0 5 and negative 10 that's much better and by the way we are observing the origin which is probably somewhere here but all the objects are shifted uh, on the on the y-axis so i think the better position for the look at point would be not 0 0 0 but 0 5 0 okay much better and now if i change the z coordinate of the camera we can see how it's closing in and i can tilt it a little bit with changing the y coordinate and even move x and it's still looking at the same point so the uh, so the angle is tilting to the left and to the right very nice by the way uh, what if you wanted the camera to have a zoom functionality we'll add a new uniform parameter right now so after the camera i'll add another one uniform uh, float zoom with a hint range and the initial value would be one and let's make it for example from point one to four with the step point zero one that's the definition and now we can simply multiply the forward vector in the fragment function when determining the coordinates of the center point here it is r o plus forward times zoom okay nothing changed of course because zoom is set to one but if i increase it we can see how it's zooming in and zooming out i would say it's working nice and let's keep the zoom at this values so we can see the whole scene very well so we have a scene that we can render from any position and at any angle finally we'll show how we can set the camera to orbit the scene at a central a certain height and always focus on the same point we simply adjust the definition of the ro vector which is now currently set to a fixed camera in the yeah, we'll use the rotate y function that we added in the previous episode and have the camera orbit around the point at the same height. So instead of camera, we will use this uh, rotate y uh, time times 0.5, so it's not too fast, and multiply it by the vector we want to rotate around the pivot point. Let's put it to 0. Uh, 5 and negative 10 okay wait for it all right it's orbiting definitely maybe maybe uh, it's too far from that so let's uh, reset the look at points to the origin zero 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 okay much better and let's reset the zoom factor now we can see everything and we can see how the camera is rotating around that perfect and we have something like a drone orbiting above the landscape. Thank you very much for watching. I'm glad we could use something new again, because this is the first time in the tutorials that I've covered the cross product and will definitely use this operation in the future for creating interesting 3D effects. Next time, we'll hopefully finally get to setting up the material for the surface of each object, and perhaps we'll even explore some interesting combinations using refraction and reflection. For now, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.